Hello, guys. Welcome back to the channel. It's Jonathan again. And, um, yeah, that's a wheat field behind us. And I realize that some of you are, are celebrating Shavuot, Pentecost at this time. So the, the debate continues. And um, I'm being really kind of forced to doing this video because of a, of a post from Chris again, using scriptures out of context. So we're going to look at those very same scriptures, you guys, because I'm going to use this as a teaching opportunity. Okay. And I appreciate that in Chris. Um, I, what I don't appreciate is taking scripture out of context. And we're going to look at um, what, what I'm, I'm talking about here with his video that he just put out about Shavuot, Ruth 2 and Leviticus 23. So we've gone over how to read and interpret Leviticus 22. And it is not a one count of 50, you guys. And, and, and here lies the conundrum and the deception. Let me just let me just slow down for a moment and just break this down for you. This is a very special day to the Father. The enemy is going to do everything he can to obscure and hide and, and confuse that day. But I'm going to show you the logic here because the Father has preserved truth in the growth cycle of wheat. And the argument here is that wheat is being harvested or is harvestable at this time. And I'm going to show you on some uh, government uh, USDA calendars, both in the United States and in, in many countries of the world, that the barley harvest starts first, and then you have a wheat harvest. They do overlap in some places, but for the most part, the barley harvest starts, and then you got a, a wheat harvest. In many places, they butt. They butt together. So you have a barley harvest that starts at Passover, and runs into the first part of summer and then cuts off. But then you have the beginning of the wheat harvest that comes at Shavuot time, which is a, around 100 days. That is a fact. You cannot harvest wheat when it's green, looking like this, and get flour. You will get a paste because the grain is too soft. I'm telling you the truth. Now, let's, let's just slow down and look at the logic here and what... Chris is proposing to you. It doesn't make any sense to me. May 26, 2023. I hope you're all enjoying the drama that is going on surrounding the debate about Shavuot. Well, the drama is just going to get a, a little bit more interesting because I have something else to present to you as evidence about when Shavuot is actually practiced. If I may direct you to the book of Ruth, chapter 2, uh, the this whole scenario starts out when Naomi and Ruth enter into the land of Judah and they are gleaning the fields after the reapers. And Naomi says to Ruth, go down to the field and glean ears of wheat, not corn, in whose side I shall find. Okay, so here's where, where I have a, the, my first problem. Because the Hebrew word here is clearly corn and he just right in front of your face changes this they were in fact gleaning corn corn all of this is a summer is a, is a a product of of the same seasons right um you're going to see corn in the field in summer going into autumn and um and that so in fact the scripture says corn and it may have been a version of corn corn is a grass in, in, in ancient times, this would have been like a maze, okay? But it, it's definitely not wheat, you guys. He's right off the bat, 50 seconds in, changing the, changing the scripture to wheat. That is not right. Grace, and you have this word in the spikes. And in the next verse, and she went and came and gleaned in the fields after the reapers. So the reapers have to be out in the field reaping before the poor and the stranger can go and glean the fields, okay? Now, the big question is, when is this taking place? Is it taking place in the middle of summer or is it taking place in the spring? That's the argument. And, and, and my argument is, this cannot be spring. 
because wheat, and I'm going to show you on all the calendars all around the world, wheat is always harvested in the summer. It is not harvested in the springtime. The Bible even declares that, that it's a summer grain, okay? It comes after the start of barley. I'm going to show you that in the, in the uh, USDA calendar. Most likely in the spring, because that's when people usually traveled after the winter months and it's not cold, it's easier to travel, the trees are nice and green, the birds are tweeting. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded her young men saying, let her glean even among the sheaves and reproach her not and let fall some of the handfuls uh, of purpose for her and leave them that she may glean and rebuke her not and read verse 17 so she gleaned in the field until even evening and beat out that she had gleaned and it was about an ephah of barley i don't understand your argument here chris indeed it was barley we're not talking about wheat and in the scripture before this the wheat harvest never ever no matter where you are in the world not even in the special place of israel is the wheat harvest before the barley the barley comes first it starts at passover this is why we have a bead and then we go to the wheat harvest starting at starting at shavuot and running all the way to sukkot which is really interesting because you actually point this out in your video here but but you don't seem to pick it up barley is only reaped or they start reaping it after pesach so boaz had his reapers out in the fields reaping wheat at the same time they were reaping barley that no no the barley harvest starts first what you read before was corn and then it shows you that she was reaping barley but if you go all the way down to verse 22, look what it says there. Let's see what it says there, Chris. It says they were reaping barley and then wheat. I can only happen in the springtime, ladies and gentlemen, and it's most likely this is between Pesach and Shavuot, which is... That is correct. Barley is harvested. In fact, between Pesach and Shavuot. The wheat harvest starts at Shavuot. It does not start in the spring. And therefore, the Shavuot cannot be a day, 50 days, in the springtime. Do you see the logic here? 50 days after Pesach, seven Sabbaths, just like it says in Leviticus. Seven Sabbaths complete, and then you number... 50 days, 102 days, the growth cycle a week. If you only stop at 50 days, you're going to have something that looks like this. It's still green. It's still green. And if you try to grind it in your grinding wheels, guess what you're going to get? A uh, paste. <laughs> it's not going to be dry. The wheat has to dry in the fields for several weeks, more than a month. So that seventh month, because it takes seven months to grow winter wheat. That seventh month, it looks like this. This is what it looks like in the seventh month. I kid you not. That's the that's the that's the freaking universal truth of of creation. It is twenty three. Actually, let's go there and let's reread some of the stuff. We know what verse 15 and 16 says in Leviticus 23, but read verse 17. You shall bring out of your habitation two, two wave loaves of two tenths of a deal. Okay, so. So this is, a, this is when you can harvest it. You cannot get to the point to the point of having loaves until you can have fine flour. And you can't get to the point of having fine flour until you can get to the point of, of, uh, uh, threshing and you can't get to the point of threshing until you get to the harvest you can't get the cart before the horse in this there has to be wheat 
that you can harvest for first fruit. So the whole field wouldn't look all brown, but some of it would be brown. You could gather that. You could make it into fine loaves or, or into fine flour, into loaves. That's your first fruits of the wheat harvest. Very similar to what we do at Abib time with waving two sheaves, except we're waving loaves in this case. Okay? And also the fine flour. You cannot get to that point until you have a harvest, Chris. How are the people supposed to come out of their habitation with two loaves of bread when none of the wheat is supposed to be harvested until 102 days after Pesach? How is that possible? You, you t yeah, answer your own question. How is it possible that after 50 days, they can come out of their habitations with two loaves? It's impossible. It has to be a more than 100 days. Here's the conundrum and why I say that Pentecost is an inserted day that has nothing to do with Shavuot. Because you have to have wheat to harvest. And folks, I'm getting people to get pictures in different places of the world right now what the wheat looks like. And I'm sorry I couldn't present them before this video. And it looks like in following years, I'm actually going to have to go to these locations Go to Israel and show you that the pictures that you're showing, sister, I'm not going to say your name, of a wheat harvest in Israel is in fact barley. The picture that you're showing is barley. The wheat harvest has not started yet. <laughs> They're just preparing for that. I just posted a video, uh, uh, a clip on Facebook yesterday of Combines just now leaving Texas, going to different places in the United States, getting ready for the harvest, which happens when? Happens in July. It's going to start in the latter part of, of June going into July. In most places of the world, you guys, I'm going to show you the USDA calendar in just a moment. How are they supposed to fulfill Father Yahuwah's commandments? The poor and the stranger... How are they supposed to fulfill this? As a matter of fact, it says it right after here. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shall not make clean riddance of the corners of the field when... Right, and so this is at the end of the harvest, right, of the wheat. Look what the, the very next verse in verse 24 says. And speak to the children of Israel in the seventh month. Why is it talking about the seventh month here? Because we just came to the end of the wheat harvest. Because you can't harvest summer wheat until the seventh month. That's why it rolls right into Sukkot. The beginning starts at Sukkot, uh, uh, Shavuot, and runs all the way to Sukkot. And that's why it says in verse 24, in the seventh month, <laughs> you should have a Sabbath, a memorial blowing the trumpets, a holy convocation. This is going into the to the festivals that are celebrating the end of the harvest season the seventh month and what's in the sky the seventh month Virgo what's in her hand she's clutching wheat because it's a, it's a universal sign it's harvest time thou reapest neither shall thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest thou shall leave them unto the poor and to the stranger yeah Naomi and Ruth were the poor and the stranger and when were they reaping the wheat in the book of in the seventh month because verse 24 tells you they were in the seventh month brother period of Ruth, I read it to you, chapter 2, verse 17. They get to glean the field at the end of the harvest. Hear what I'm telling you. The beginning of the harvest starts at Shavuot and runs all the way through the summer. They get to glean when? At the end. At the end. During the barley harvest. You have the first fruits of the barley harvest. They get to glean at the end of the barley harvest, right? 
but the wheat is not harvested at the same it, it laps it let's just go look let's let's let me just take you that you guys so that you could see it, you know this is not jonathan just making this up all right so let's look at the united states first and get that over with Okay, so let's look barley because you got two kinds of two kinds of barley. You got spring and fall barley. All right, it's planted here, but it start the harvest starts for barley in around April, which is what Passover time. Okay, and then it runs into the summer. But but look, let's look at the spring and winter wheats. It doesn't start till July. The, the, the spring wheat is not even harvested and started until August. Okay? So this is, look, nowhere do you see wheat being harvested in May right here. This is the harvest right here. What we do see is barley. Okay? All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is many countries. Albania, winter wheat, when's it started harvest? Starts in June, runs through the, the summer. Austria, let's look at the barley. You got spring barley that's planted. It grows, harvested when? Spring barley is harvested in, in early August all the way through to the autumn. Winter barley, when's it start? In Austria, it starts after uh, May. So you can't even get barley in Austria harvested in time but look at the winter wheat it starts at the end of june just like i told you runs all the way through the summer belgium what are we looking at winter wheat a winter barley look barley starts here wheat starts here barley is first this laps okay winter wheat winter wheat in bosnia mid-june barley Winter barley starts at the end of May, going into June. But look at the look at the winter wheat. It's still after. It does lap, but it goes after. It starts in June. It, it starts in June, you guys. All around the world. Cyprus might be the exception to the rule because they have different, you know, a, a different climate there on an island. Barley. In Denmark, you know, this is the only place where I can see see that you got wheat before barley, exception to the rule. Estonia. You know, even, you know, their, their barley starts before the harvest of the winter wheat. But you see my point, you guys. All around the world, winter wheat is a summer. Both both of them, winter and spring wheat, are both both harvested in the summer, never in the spring. I'm not bringing you something preposterous and and far fetched. Far from that. I'm trying to bring you the logic and truth. And people are taking the, the scriptures out of context. Let's look at some of those scriptures. I want to go back to Ruth 2 from uh, what Chris was just showing. All right. Let's look at Ruth 2. And then Boaz said unto Ruth, Hearest thou uh, not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from thence, but abide here fast by my maidens, and let thine eyes see the field that they go do reap and go thou after them i have not charged the young men that they should uh, not touch thee and when thou art artist go into the vessels and drink that of the that of which the young men have drawn and then she fell on her face and bowed herself unto the ground and said unto him why have i found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me seeing that i'm a stranger and Boaz answered and said unto her, 
it hath fully seen and shown me, it hath fully been shown to me that thou hast done unto my mother-in-law since the, the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of your nativity, and out come into the people which thou knowest not here heretofore, and Yahuwah recompense thy word, and a full reward to be given thee of Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, under whose wings thou hast come to trust. And then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my, uh, uh, my <coughs> Adonai, for thou hast comforted me, and for thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaiden, and uh, thought I be not unlike un, un, to one of thine handmaidens. So it has nothing to do with what, what, so it takes a lot to get there, but watch what it says here. And Boaz said unto her at mealtime, come thither and eat of the bread and dip the morsel of it in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers and he reached for the parched corn and she did eat it and was sufficed and left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, let her glean even among the sheaves and reproach her not and let her fall uh, and let her fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. And she gleaned the field even until they beat out that which she had gleaned, which is called threshing. And you do that with, with barley. You also do that with um, wheat. It has to be threshed and, and winnowed. And it was about an ephah of barley. So it tells you right here, Chris, that we're dealing with barley. And she took it up and went into the city. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned and brought it forth and gave it to her that she had reserved uh, after she was sufficing. And her mother-in-law said unto her, what thou hast gleaned today and where wroughtest uh, thou? Blessed be he that did take advantage of thee. And he showed her mother-in-law with uh, who, and she showed her mother-in-law in whom she had wrought and said, this man's name whom I wrought today was Boaz. And Naomi said unto her mother-in-law, blessed be he of Yahuwah who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, this man is near of kin unto us. He is one of our kinsmen. And Ruth and the Moabites said, in, uh, he said unto me also thou shalt keep fast by my young men and they shall have ended until my harvest and Naomi said unto her daughters and her daughter-in-law it is good my daughter to go out with his maidens that they meet thee not in any other field so she kept the fast by the maidens and Boaz to glean the field at the end of the barley harvest which starts first, and of the wheat harvest, which comes second. So I don't get what you're trying to do in, in twisting Ruth 2 to show that, you know, you, you're harvesting barley and wheat at the same time in, in you know, the, the fourth month, fifth month. It doesn't make any sense. You haven't proven that at all. So um, that's all I got for you guys in this video on all I'm going to show, unless Chris puts out another one that I can tear apart. Um, that's all I got for you today. So you guys, if you live in those areas, if you live in Nebraska, Oklahoma, um, from, from Oregon, Idaho, any of the places where they're growing wheat, take a drive, please, for me. Go take some pictures and show what the wheat field looks like at this day that they're calling Pentecost. And it looks green. It does not look like this. Nowhere near this. Help me. Somebody please do, do you know, throw me something. Nobody can see this? Really? Shalom to you. May you who bless you. May you open your eyes that you can see this. You guys, we've been lied to, not just about the names. Not just about, you know, Saturday observance and w what it is. And by the way, if you're trying to keep all of this and on a Saturday, forget it. Forget about it. You're not even close.
okay? Because all of this, agriculture and our Shabbat is all dictated by the sun and the moon, period. Bible 101, that's what it says. You guys, I love you. I really, I really do. And I really want you to get this. I'm, I'm not doing this because it, I like being contentious. Well, it's not about that. I want you to know the truth. It's like I found a, a, a treasure and I want to share it with you. And it's like people are going, no, thank you. It's like, oh, it, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating because the, the point is, if we're going to get to the point of what happened in apps, where they're in, in the upper room in one mind and one accord, we cannot be devised on the day. We have to get it right. One mind and one accord is what they were. And we are five, six different ways. It grieves me. Shalom. I'll see you in the next video.